Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. A while back, I mentioned someone sent me an email that was so concise, it was one sentence. I believe it was the one that said, you know, can a surveyor trespass to do his job? And I said, what a great question. One sentence, I understand it. I can talk about this. I wish all my emails were that concise. <laughs> Some emails are walls of text. <laughs> Got another good email yesterday. Guy goes, why would anybody sign a non-disclosure agreement? Why would anybody sign a non-disclosure agreement? And he did ask some follow-ups to make sure I understood the question. But I did. But he said, what's in it for me? Why, why would I do that? Why would I do that? So it's a great question. I'm not sure if he wants me to say his name, so I won't. But the non-disclosure agreement something we've heard a lot about lately in the news. And it's an agreement between two parties where the parties agree not to talk about something in public. And it could be a confidentiality agreement. It could be a non-disclosure agreement. There's a bunch of different names they've got for them. Uh, but generally speaking, that's what it is. Now, keep in mind that a non-disclosure agreement might be a lengthy document titled non-disclosure agreement. Uh, it might also simply be a part of another document, though, like a, a, like a settlement agreement. Or even a contract might contain a non-disclosure agreement. Um, but at its heart, a non-disclosure agreement by itself is a contract. And so they're interpreted under contract law, and they're considered contracts. So by definition, because it's a contract, the parties are exchanging consideration, meaning that both sides get something from it. So to sign a non-disclosure agreement to make it, you know, have it make sense, means that you got something from it. And quite often, you got money for it. Now, with respect to the email, we're saying, but why would somebody sign it? Because quite often, the situations we hear about are the ones where somebody got money, but you think they probably would have gotten money anyway, right? Well, not necessarily. So we've heard about situations with politics, with Hollywood. Uh, it's often an employment setting uh, and, and situations where somebody signed a non-disclosure agreement after working someplace or dealing with somebody. And a lot of people read between the lines and they say, okay, this person was working with that person. And they've now signed a non-disclosure. They're not going to talk about what happened between the two of them. We can kind of read between the lines, right? And if that person got paid not to talk about it, you know, you can start figuring this stuff out. But getting back to why you would sign this. So let's suppose you were in a situation where you had an interaction with somebody that was wrongful on their part, what they did to you. And you went and talked to an attorney and said, I want to sue that person. I want to sue that person for what they did to me. I'm purposely keeping this vague because it doesn't really matter so much. Let's assume that they did, in fact, do something to you that was wrongful. You know it, they know it. You go to an attorney who handles those kind of cases and go, I want to sue that person. So your attorney drafts a complaint, looks good, does all the investigation. This one's a good case. They serve it on the other side. In fact, they might even contact them and not serve it. Just say, here's the complaint we're about to file just so you can see it. Because once it gets filed, it becomes a public record. So let's say they just hand it to him and say, look, we're about to sue you with this. What are your thoughts? They might look at it and go, gee, I know that that's actually what exactly what happened. That's going to be ugly. I'm going to have to pay a ton of money because of this. So they might have their attorney call your attorney back and say, you know something? I think we can resolve this. We'll pay you some money, but you got to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And that keeps the entire story out of the press. And so you want a million dollars in your lawsuit? We'll pay you half if you sign a non-disclosure agreement. Now, I'm not saying that's always how the negotiations work. I'm simply saying that that might be what they'd say. So they say half a million dollars, sign a non-disclosure. Now, your attorney is going to tell you, you've got every right to turn this down. You can go to court. If we go to court and defeat all the motions filed by their fancy pants lawyers, and we get to trial, and a jury hears your story. They might give you a million dollars. They might also give you zero. They might saw the baby in half and do bad math and give you 400. No one knows. Juries are unpredictable. So you got the sure thing of the half million today with an NDA, or you can go to trial and roll the dice. What do you want to do? And the sure thing actually looks much more attractive at that point in time. But part of that deal is, of course, that you're going to sign the NDA. If you go to trial, it becomes public. There's no NDA. So it becomes the question of what's more important to you, telling your story publicly or simply getting some form of resolution, making them pay somehow. 
And some people will go with that. So what you're often getting out of it is an earlier settlement that is a certain amount versus a later resolution with an uncertain amount. Now, I've mentioned before, these are contracts. So they're going to be interpreted by contract law. They're going to vary from state to state. Contract law is one of those things that does vary wildly from state to state. So an NDA in California might read very differently than one from New York or Michigan or Florida or Ohio. Uh, that's one thing to think about. But there are also other issues that arise. So for instance, an NDA might say right in it, if anyone asks you, here is what you are allowed to say. Anything beyond this is a violation of the agreement. So it might say, if asked, you are allowed to say, I was employed by Acme Rocket Sled Company. While E. Coyote was my direct supervisor, we have parted on amicable terms. I no longer work there. That is all. And the agreement might say that. So that if the press starts poking around and say, hey, we heard you had some issues over there with that Wiley Coyote guy. What was that all about? You have the statement, you hand it to him and go, there you go. That's all I can say. And they can guess that you signed an NDA and they can speculate about what it was that happened between you and the Coyote. Don't know though, and that's all you're allowed to say. Some NDAs will say right in them that you can disclose information if compelled to do so by a court order or under some other settings. So for instance, if there became an issue with the IRS regarding the money you got paid, you may have to disclose that to the IRS, obviously. And likewise, let's suppose that somehow you were a witness in a case involving the Acme Rocket Sled Company, because Lord knows their sleds quite often end up crunched up against the sides of cliffs, and you get called as a witness. Tell the truth, whole truth, not the truth, so help you God? Yes. Tell us about your employment at Acme Rocket Sled. I'm sorry, I can't. NDA. Oh, no, you better believe you can. <laughs> You're in the witness box, and you just raised your hand to tell us the truth and the whole truth. So you got to tell us. So if compelled by subpoena, you may, you may be allowed to get around that also. However, those are minor exceptions. I'd like to point out a couple other things, though, just because they're related. And one of them is a non-disclosure that someone will ask someone to sign before disclosing something to them. So let's suppose that I have come up with a new widget. I've got a new widget. I've actually got a widget that will make the Acme rocket sled veer and avoid obstacles and lock in on the Roadrunner and hit him every single time. I've got this invention I came up with. Now, I could sell it to anybody. I could sell it to the U.S. military. I could, I could sell it to Kmart. But Acme Rocket Sled appears to be the most likely customer for my product because they've got those darn rocket sleds. So I want to go to Acme Rocket Sled and show them my invention and see if they want to buy it. Now, I haven't patented my invention because it's a very expensive process. And let's just assume that I've decided I'm still working on it. I haven't patented it yet. I'm worried if I show it to them, they might just steal it. What's to keep them from doing that? Well, there's a non-disclosure agreement that's quite common, at least it used to be, in some industries, where you could say, I am going to disclose an invention to you that I don't believe you've ever seen. And you promise not to steal it from me. And the agreement will often have terms that they say, I promise not to steal the invention after you show it to me. But it does say, unless it's something we already know about and you didn't know that. Because it's quite possible, I'm going to show it to you and they're going to go, we've already got that. <laughs> we've already got that. But there are forms, and if you look them up on the internet, they're easy to find. So that if you had an idea for something and you wanted to bring it to somebody and say, here's my idea, how do you keep them from stealing it? You get them to sign the non-disclosure agreement. Now, a lot of corporations simply wouldn't do that. They just go, now, we're, we're, we're sick and tired of this. We don't, we don't care. The odds of you having something we need, eh. But it's, it's a possibility. I'm just pointing it out. And then also, on a related note, are non-compete agreements. Non-compete agreements. So let's suppose that you go to work someplace. You get hired to work someplace. And you get brought in by the people at the Acne Rocket Sled Company. <laughs> And you're going to sell rocket sleds in Colorado, okay, and Arizona. You're going to get the whole western region, okay, of, of, of the United States as your region to sell rocket sleds. 
And so you sign a contract saying, you know, I'm happy to work here and I'm, you guys are going to pay me this and I'm going to get paid that, blah, 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 blah. Company car, <laughs> company rocket sled, I don't know. And, and you sign all these documents that you're going to work there. At the very, very bottom, it says non-compete agreement. You agree that upon leaving the employment of the Acme Rocket Sled Company, that you will not work for any of our competitors for a five-year period in the entire United States. Five-year period. Is that enforceable? The answer is probably no. But if they said for five years in the same states you're currently covering, and let's say you're covering five states, that might be enforceable. And it depends on the state, but many states say that non-compete agreements, as long as they were part of something that you got, i.e. an employment contract or, or your leaving package, whatever it might be called, those kinds of settings, if you got something in exchange, contract law, then that's going to be enforceable so long as it's not unreasonable. And many states would say what makes it reasonable or unreasonable is the length of time and the region, how far it covers. So I know disc jockeys who worked in radio in one market, and they actually said, if you leave our employment, you cannot work in this market for one year. You can go to the next market over and work all you want. Or you can wait a year and work in this market. And they say that they're doing it because while you're there, they're going to put up billboards and ads and put you on television and promote you. And if you take all this promotion to build up your own goodwill and then you leave to go across town, well... They don't want you doing that. So they're going to say, we put the investment in you in exchange for you not doing that to us. But if they said you cannot work as a disc jockey in America for 10 years, that'll get struck down because you've got to be able to make a living. And so I've done a ton of research on this in Michigan a few years back for a case I was working on. And as long as the time frame is reasonable and the region is reasonable, in Michigan, it'll be enforceable. So that could be part of your contract when you sign up or it might be part of your separation package. And I've also seen people who are leaving companies who had been told when you leave, here's what we're going to give you. And you can't obviously just go across the street and compete against us because the thinking is that depends on the business you're in. You might have all the contacts for all the business. You might know proprietary information about the business and things of that nature. So those kinds of non-compete agreements are out there. And to me, they're kind of related to non-disclosure agreements because you're contractually bound to avoid doing certain things as a result of a contract you signed with somebody else. And people often find themselves later with this contract in an attorney's office going, is this enforceable? And the answer, of course, quite often is yes. And you'd be better off asking an attorney at the front end, if I sign this, is this enforceable? And they say, yes, probably. Then you have to say, well, gee, do I really want to sign this? So that's the non-compete agreement. Uh, there's the disclosure of trade secrets agreement. Like I said, you have a trade secret idea that you want to bring somebody an invention maybe, uh, and you want them to sign the thing saying they won't steal it if you show it to them. But really, it's the confidentiality agreements or the non-disclosure agreements that we hear about. And quite often, we'll hear about situations, and I remember not so long ago hearing the stories of women who were saying, I signed an NDA, but I would like to tell my story. And a bunch of them had publicly said, I'd like to tell my story, but I signed an NDA, and they were appealing for the person with whom they had the NDA to release them from it. And I'm not going to get into whether or not people should release somebody from a legally binding contract. That's another story altogether. But of course, the issue is you understand that it's a contract, and you got something out of the contract, presumably, otherwise it wouldn't be enforceable. So if they paid you money and you signed an NDA... Well, you got the money, right? So it's hard to say that you should be allowed to just break it for no reason. However, that's another story altogether that gets more into morality and ethics probably than anything else because courts will uphold these NDAs, especially when someone got paid. So more often than not, why would someone sign one? Because it offers them a quicker settlement that's certain versus a speculative possibility down the road. So there you go. Thanks for the question. It was a great one. Why would somebody sign an NDA? That's why. <laughs> Questions or comments, put it below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. 453.6 gram crackers equals one pound cake.